Welcome back to the show. Uh, this is a great conversation, a great topic that many of us are talking about. Unfortunately, um, not enough is being done. And that's why it's great to have my next guest on the show because he's helping to build a better Ottawa. And we can only do that with in your input and, and your help. Toon Dressen is the president of Architects DCA and spokesperson for the Reform Procurement Campaign. Welcome, Tone. Great Thank to have you back here. Um, let's first of all talk about the procurement process that we have here now in the city of Ottawa and, and some of those negative aspects when it comes to that, that process. Sure. I mean, some of the challenges, and this really gets into the, into the nitty-gritty, into the weeds of how architects and engineers are commissioned, but a lot of it is driven by um, you know, very exclusionary processes that limit only to uh, you know to only accepting bids from people who have past experience so you can only get experience if you have experience which essentially means that there's no room at the table for new voices new firms new businesses and that really excludes a lot of firms the vast majority of firms especially when they're added to um, arbitrary cutoffs and time limits if you designed a library 10 years ago well somehow that doesn't count anymore you're only going to look at libraries that you designed five years ago mm -hmm. uh, and that extends through a huge range of projects and types and then once those firms who have recently designed libraries for example are considered really what matters the most at the end of the day is the price and the lowest fee carries a huge weight a disproportionate weight in the serve in the in the provision of services is that the only purpose then is yeah. to get the lowest price yeah that's yeah. the only purpose yeah. quality doesn't seem to, to matter minimum quality minimum standards and right. that's really what ends up driving the conversation is do the least possible work for the smallest possible fee to achieve the smallest possible outcome and that really doesn't advantage uh, the public very much because you end up sort of underperforming public infrastructure Right. Yeah, let's talk about that, public infrastructure in general, because I know you think that um, we haven't done a very good job of being imaginative and mm -hmm. creative. And, um, and, you know, just came back from Venice recently. Uh, what a difference being in a, you know, in an environment like that. And I know it's different times and, you know, older country and so forth. But what could we be doing better to become more imaginative and creative and have these wonderful public spaces? Well, some fundamental things that we can do is just changing how we think about our projects. Instead of having having really limited scopes defined by staff that define the limit of what we can do and then opening the door to extras and extra fees and changes, um, let's open the door through creative competition, uh, design competitions, des creative ideas. You know, even something as fundamental as a public park. If we design a new park, we put in a splash pad. That splash pad needs a little equipment shed. Instead of, the, first of all, that being the most boring, utilitarian, precast, concrete, ugly little box, right. let's make that, let's think about that opportunity. We have potable water, we have wastewater. Let's add a drinking fountain. Let's make a public washroom. So that if you take your kids to the park and they're pl playing and having a good time, and as kids do, they gotta pee, and you suddenly have to pack up and go home or go pee behind a tree. Right. Why don't we do the same when it comes to bus stations and LRT stations. Why doesn't every station have a fully accessible public washroom. One of the fundamental challenges in the Bayard market is that there's not enough public washrooms. Where do tourists go? Where do people have a chance to use a washroom in a public setting? And we don't think about that and right. we don't plan for it because we limit our choices and limit our voices. Uh, you have another example. I believe it's the Zamboni yep. shed, right? Um, at, at, is it at City Hall? The yep. one you're, you're just, okay, here it is right here. This is the example of you know, why, why can't we do something interesting with, exactly. with something like this, right? Exactly. You know, this was a shed that we absolutely needed a, a place to store the Zamboni for the Skate Shack. When we compare that to how, um, I believe it's Waterloo designed their, uh, or Guelph designed their Skate Shack, they put it uh, a, a nicer building. They made it glass. They made it pretty. They gave you a place to have a washroom, a place to change your skates, a place to sit down. And they made it part of the infrastructure. And in here we have, uh, you know, a building, the, the the, the city hall building that was designed by one of Canada's most renowned architects and we put a really ugly basic kind of piece of junk shed mm -hmm. oh sure it does the job but how much more could it do if we tried a little harder is is the washroom and you know I'm passionate about this because I live within continent so yeah. is the washroom situation simply a financial decision like you know what uh, we're building an LRT and you know what we, we need to cut some corners in 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 order to sell it to to the public in a sense but I think what we miss in that conversation is we think about cutting corners and saving a few dollars today and we don't think about the the impact that has on our quality of life on our quality of being and, and its impact on tourism 
You know, years and years ago, the old skate shacks that were on the canal were pretty ugly trailers. They were pretty yeah. boring. Yeah. And, and the National Capital Commission did a fantastic job. They went out and they hired a really fantastic firm who designed these beautiful chalets. And we think now about how many millions of Instagram photos those show up in around the world of how beautiful that is and how attractive they are and how much that drives tourism dollars and tourism investment. Think about what that impact is, that if we had beautiful public washrooms in the Bayard Market, the second most visited tourist destination in the city, mm. what would that do for tourists if they arrived, had a chance to walk around, see an incredible public heritage infrastructure, saw some beautiful washrooms, and they went away with that lasting memory of that feeling of being welcomed in the city, of a quality of life for people. We choose to cut off our nose to spite our face, just to, to limit cost. And really, we're talking a G7 city, yeah. world capital city. <laughs> so true. And, and we can't be bothered to put in a public washroom. We can't be bothered to do the right thing. We do the least thing possible. Um, the reform procurement campaign, uh, you have a great website that really breaks down all of the sort of the ideas. And, and one of the things that you're asking is, is for the public to get involved. H how can they and how should they get involved? So we're about to launch a, a petition um, okay. that we'd love to see uh, more people participate in and follow. So that's going to be launched in the next few days. Um, we'd love for people to see the website. There's a template letter that they can use that they can write to the mayor, write to the councillor. We really want people to see that there is a political will and a public will to see a better built environment, to see better parks, better buildings, places that are more accessible and welcoming and enhance our quality of life. It's not just architects and engineers and landscape architects who are the members of this coalition. It's the public. We're serving the public and we want the public to be excited about our best Ottawa. Uh, and I am excited. Tone, really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, thanks so much. Thanks for having uh, me. We brought up that website. Also, you know, and I, I would encourage you to follow Tone on, on Twitter as well. Well, because he's he's very active there and always sharing some interesting ideas and it's tune t-o-o-n it's spelled uh, Dreesen is the last name with two e's we'll be back with more right after this